so excited for this one. Wes Bentley! Dude, I'm excited to talk to you. You did this film years ago with Scott Speedman called Weirdsville <laughs> yeah. that I, I watched it when I went, this movie is unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I know you were in American Beauty and other things, but still, <laughs> Weirdsville, uh, how are things? Awesome. Yeah, yeah that, was a, that was a great experience, Weirdsville. We shot that here and in Hamilton. It was one of the best experiences I've ever had, and it's a funny movie, and I I'm great. It's one, one of the only movies you've done that you don't mind watching. Yeah, it's true. I watched it like, I, I got every cut. It's, I don't do that, you know, I don't go sit in the editing room and watch my movies, or if I watch a movie, I'll watch it a couple of times, but Weirdsville, I'll watch it, I, I'll watch it anytime. I think, you could watch, I think you could watch Pioneer, because I think it's, you're gonna learn different things as the film goes on. For those who haven't seen it yet, wa walk us through the basic plot of this. Well, um, Norway, up until the 70s or 80s, was a mostly agricultural country, and then they discovered oil off their coast. And of course, that changed the country. Um, this movie really takes is a, is a thriller based around those kind of concepts. There's and so much distrust in it. There's so much yep. need for forgiveness in this film. People, Government control. Right. Yep. I mean, it's just got, it just must be fun to kind of walk into a story like that with so many layers. So many layers. So many per like you said, the personal layers with the with the, um, the main character and his loss and and uh, trying to recover from that and and then the the, the bigger layers of the government controlling things and. Uh, um, you know, money, basically. Uh, there's lots of stuff we can talk about in your life. I want to go back to early filmmaking. Early, early filmmaking. Let's look at this for a second. Oh, Jesus. Early, early <laughs> stuff. Before you go to Hollywood, people always warn you not to get pulled into the lifestyle. This is awesome. <laughs> but you know you're too smart for that. You'll never be a junkie and is piss away your opportunities. Oh, my big oh, yeah. Really? <laughs> That's amazing, dude. Yeah. So that's called My Big Break. Yeah. Is that you and your brother made that one? No, that's, no? Uh, that's, I lived in, I moved to LA in uh, uh, the late 90s, like 98, and uh, I moved in with a group of guys. Yeah. That was them. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was a bunch of actors trying to make it, and, um, uh, and you know, we just shoot stupid videos and stuff, and one of them turned it into a documentary. Because while I lived in that house, I, uh, American Beauty, came out right. and it blew up and got very big. And so, uh, and then we had a, a couple other actors in the house who were doing well. So, he, and then one actor who was really struggling. So he, he turned it into a docu documentary to show the, the effect, basically the Hollywood effect. Well, the subject matter <laughs> of that particular clip yeah. is heavy because, you know, and you've yeah. been open about, you know, cleaning up. Yeah. But that subject matter <laughs> became your life in a way. No, he, yeah. He, um, yeah, I think a lot of, you know, that, that wasn't the reason why things happened, but I, you know, I just got into Hollywood and I got successful at 19 or 20, and I, uh, I just went too far with everything, you know, and everything was accessible, drugs, partying. Mm. Uh, I really lost myself completely. I, I feared the fame was a big part of it. I didn't know how to handle it. I didn't know how to handle the attention. I, when, you were, when you were using... Were you watching other celebrities talk about their own addiction? Oh yeah, absolutely. It was—it's a big part of why I do yeah. uh, talk about it in public. I, you know, I would be strung out all night or all morning. I don't know what time it was, and I'd see Robert Downey Jr. on TV after he had cleaned up, or or someone else, or talking about being sober. Or I think Josh Hamilton was now he's a baseball player for the Texas Rangers, and now he's at the Angels. Him talking about cleaning up, and they had been doing the same kind of stuff I was doing, and. I saw them and knew that they could make it and that they could be successful again and happy again. And, and that's where I'm at now. I'm, I'm, I'm getting some success again and I'm happy. I'm happier than I've ever been. And I was at that place. I was sitting at home, clutching my heart, hoping it wouldn't stop and uh, listening to these guys talk, knowing that there one day might be a way out of this that's if heavy. I ask for help. That's a heavy, heavy moment. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is. Yeah, but it's, you know, it's a heavy moment, but you know, I thought at the time, if I admitted it, that that would cause me more trouble, when in fact, admitting it relieved a huge amount of pressure. Right. Just saying, like, I got a problem, can somebody help me? People forgive you when you can, you know, people forgive you when you can admit your mistakes. Were there people pointing you in the right way? You know, I didn't surround myself with the right people at the right time. Uh, there were people who tried, and but I rejected them. It's almost like you know that thing, that beast inside me. It wanted to like, wanted to tear me down. That beast of addiction. It, it's, 
it's always looking for a way, you know, even when you're sober or clean or before you even drank, it's just it's always looking for a way to corner you and hold you up and get you to do what it wants you to do. Well, I know some you've known and some you didn't know. I don't I don't know if you knew Corey Monteith at all, but I know that with Heath Ledger, like, it's just sometimes we lose him and it's the most heartbreaking of all. Yeah. Yeah, I I can't Heath was uh he Heath was like a brother to me and um it only gets harder. It only gets harder because I miss him more as I get older. You know, we came up at the same time and we, uh, things are kind of happening the same way. We took different paths a little later, but um, meaning in our careers, we were still good friends. And uh, it just gets harder as I get older because I miss him more every day. And you know what life is, right? And you're like, man, he would have loved this. He would have loved, yeah. I feel that way more. You're like, yeah. He would have loved to see you today. I was just thinking about that. Yeah. I was just thinking, he, he always wanted me to do with my career what I'm kind of, what's kind of happening now. So, I mean, he was always trying to like get me to shake out of it and do that. And so he, I, I was just thinking the other day, he would he would have loved to have seen this. Yeah. And I would have loved to have seen where he's at now because he was just getting better and better. Incredible. He's already great. Stick around more with Wes right after this. <laughs> How Regina and Iron Maiden teamed up to change Wes's life. Next. Our names are Bitly, Whiting, Bitly, and Calgary. And here we are to perform Is Patrick athletes Matt? trying yeah. out for a Nike program. <laughs> all right, okay, um, listen, Ted, all you gotta do, all you gotta do is hold this shoe. Hold this shoe. I read this script, okay? Test shoe. This shoe. Hold the shoe. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Huh? <laughs> we had to go deep into your family yeah, for that wow. one. You had to search hard for that one. I... That, that's what your brother's in that, right? Yeah, my brother was the one I handed the shoe to, Patrick. I want to play um, another scene. This is from not really from your life, but kind of from your life. The glory of the prairies in this beautiful country. Can we see this for a sec? Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> that <amazing>? That's incredible. <laughs> um... All right, do you remember that show? Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I, I know. <laughs> so that's not me on stage, it's Iron Maiden. <laughs> That's Regina, right? That's Regina. That's, uh, I, this is great. I'm, I'm married to a Canadian from Regina. Yeah, and she's beautiful and wonderful. I, the reason the Iron Maiden clip, I met her through a friend. She worked on Corner Gas as an associate producer, and I went up there to shoot a film called Dolan's Cadillac, and I, uh, we had a mutual friend, the publicist uh, named Rochelle, and she invited us all to an Iron Maiden concert. <laughs> And I fell in love. In that moment, right? <laughs> in that moment, yeah. We were watching the Iron Maiden concert, which I knew one song to, and it was an amazing concert. But <laughs> I fell in love with this girl, Jackie. Yeah. Did you fall in love with her during a particular song, or was it? Do you remember <laughs> the yeah. moment? Yeah, it was Run to the Hills. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's a, there's like a 75 year old guy who's been married for 40 years who said Run to the Hills is exactly right. Yes. yes. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. Yeah. You know. All right. That's your apology. You ready? Oh Rapid yeah. Rapid yeah. fire some things toward okay. you. All right. What's something you don't believe in? Uh, hate. What's something you believe in completely? You can't say love. Patience. All right. What does the son of a preacher man, uh, preacher family um, do when you say, hey, I'm going to play the devil's son in Ghost Rider? <laughs> <laughs> they, don't <watch> <laughs> they don't watch it. No, no actually, my, my, my parents watched it. My grandparents are a little more uh, conservative, a little more evangelical. Yeah. So they didn't watch it. Most of my movies they can't watch. What would you rather drive, a Benz, a Beamer, or a Bentley? Bentley. The world needs more what? Patience. When I say fatherhood, you say? Love. When I say soccer, you say? Awesome. Can we see this soccer? Do we have that? <sighs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. Wow. <laughs> Look how high the shorts are. Yeah, they are pretty I, high, I, man. You don't have to tuck your shirt in. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> uh, what's one TV show you'd like to make a guest appearance on? Well, I would have liked Corner Gas, but uh, yeah. um, it would have been 30 Rock, 30 Rock. It'll be all right. Yeah. You're a big uh, fan of like the TV shows now, the Breaking Bads, the, the, the Luthers, all that? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, um, 
Yeah, and I've got, I've got, an, I really wanted an HBO show, and now I've got a, a pilot I'm going to be shooting next for year. HBO? Yeah, for HBO called um, Open. Brian Murphy created it. He did uh, Glee and American Horror Story and yeah. Nip Tuck. Well, congrats on Pioneer, man. Really well done. Thank you. And everything. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for everybody. We'll be right back. Thank you.